Oh, come all you colliers who work down the mines From Scotland to South Wales, from Teasdale to Tyne I'll sing you a song of a power to wake her eyes And the men who were fooled by the government's lies And it's down you go, down below Jack Where you never see the skies And you're working in a dungeon for a pound a week rise And it's down you go, down below Jack Where you never see the skies And you're working in a dungeon for a pound a week rise Today's first idea was to shoot possible Knight Templar places but things go in different way in life and we don't expect it and today I was I was a bit shocked how lovely and beautiful people living in this city and uh, wait until end of the video and I will show you why because I have no words you need to see it And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button below and you can be notified for every single video that I'm posting every weekend, every Saturday in the morning. And I will gladly have you in my community of people which like to help each other. And I want to show you very nice places here in Scotland. On the wall, you can see this monument, Lead Coat of Arm. Despising the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus in a boat, some, however, suggest the figures were originally intended to represent Mary Magdalene and the baby she had with Jesus. Around the shield is the Indian maize, cereal plant originated in America. Columbus introduced maize into Europe after 1492, so why does it appear on here? On my left is Trafalgar Hall, home of the Mason Lodge since 1888. stands on the site of the demolished hospital of St. Anthony, built in the 15th century and looks closely at the symbols of Freemasonry carved into the frontage. South Lake Parish Church, originally the Kirk of Our Lady St. Mary, it's a congregation of the Church of Scotland. Church has been founded in 1487. It stands just beyond the foot of Late Walk and it's surrounded by a large graveyard. This church is a part of hearts of local lead community. On my left, you can see former St. Thomas Church from 1840. And you know what? Let's go look inside.
just, you can just tie it yourself if you want. Right. Is that okay? Yeah. Obviously, two entrances is a mirrored image of the staircase on the other side. But like I says, this temporary cordon is just simply to create a one-way system. Okay. Just because of COVID. Normally, this is the, you know, a, a, a side to come up and a side to come down. You're going to see uh, on the other side of these doors is the uh, the main spiritual praying room uh, chamber that we have established. And this used to be pretty much the same, but downstairs, but on a lot smaller scale. And you'll see the amount of space that's been created due to the fire, due to the renovation back in the 80s. The elders decided to move everything upstairs and make a secondary floor. And this has created so much space and so much uh, opportunity for us now. We have doubled our floor space and now we've got more than ample amount of space downstairs, but also a beautiful prayer room. So I'll take you through. So, um, obviously this is the, the, the main uh, prayer room and what you're seeing and what the focal point of this is, is uh, what's our, uh, the Sikh spiritual scriptures, which is referred to as Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, which is uh, a compilation of, uh, of hymns and poems and scriptures that have been collective uh, from all different faiths. And this is the key thing about uh, Sikhism where a lot of people don't realize this, that the scriptures that we respect and bow down to on a daily basis, where we uh, we look at it as our spiritual guru, is a compilation uh, of different scriptures from different, different faiths, but all preaching the same universal message. And, you know, our uh, fifth guru, Guru Arjun Dev Ji, was the, the one that compiled all of the hymns together and to create it like almost like a volume of spiritual uh, knowledge that would describe what God is, how to love God, how to be a good person, how to respect other people, how to respect other faiths, and general things throughout life what you would need to know and what a religion should preach. So what you're seeing is obviously the throne that the scriptures sit on and in the scriptures and who it's written by. And it's written by very knowledgeable, respected people from different, different faiths, from Hinduism, from Islam, from Jain, from obviously people from a Sikh background as well. But their knowledge and their focus has all been the same. And this is why the message was simply very easy to collaborate and put on the same scriptures because everybody was on the same wavelength as that. And you said to me something downstairs which, which reflects that. If we respect your religion, you respect our religion, everybody gets on and everybody has that same uh, mission and the same focus and the same path. So, uh, the whole message of Guru Granth Sahib Ji is actually oneness, where we are one family living on the one planet under the one sky made by the, one, the same creator that made us all. And th the way we should look at faith and different religions is almost as if the world is a garden. If you had a garden and you only had one type of flower in it, the garden would be fairly boring because it would only be the same flower everywhere you go. But when you go to a garden and you see pink flowers, green flowers, yellow flowers, red flowers, orange leaves, you know, it makes everything just so more beautiful. It's almost like a bouquet of flowers, which is what makes it so unique. There's so many different aspects and different colors and different smells and different aromas but it's all one and we all come from the same earth. We are trying to show the world that we are one. Okay, we may look different, we may pray differently, we may eat differently, we may do dress differently, but reality is we all come from the same maker, from the same earth, from the same molecules. We came the same way, we're going to go the same way. And what we do in between the coming and going is the most important part. Maybe it's not visible under my mask while I'm smiling. That's right. Thank you for this word no, because fine. I think people need these words. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, of the scriptures in there. I understand. This is kind of a sleeping chamber. Yeah, 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 it's like a sleeping, like a... 
yeah, basically like a sleeping chamber. So that's obviously like a bed. There's a mattress on there. There's copies of the scriptures that go on to it. Where we're standing at the moment, this is obviously now is the communal kitchen and the dining hall. But um, a lot of people may not know this. This room was actually the original um, chamber of the, the church where people used to come and congregate. It used to be known as St. Thomas's Church. And this roof is actually a, a, a false roof. And there used to be a, a balcony seating area around, around above where we are. And you can actually see the slope of the ceiling, which shows it was almost like an auditorium where people could join the congregation upstairs and look down and, and listen and watch the sermons as they were going along. And unfortunately, when we, when we took the building over, which was probably in the late 70s, early 80s, after a few years, we unfortunately experienced our first hate crime in Edinburgh against the temple. And uh, some individuals unfortunately broke in, vandalized uh, the inside of the building and also set fire to the actual uh, congregation hall that we had. Uh, so there was quite a lot of damage that had occurred. And um, we, we actually had to initiate a full refurbishment of the building because it just wasn't safe to occupy it. So all the elders in our community at that particular time got together and almost redesigned the building to accommodate future generations that were going to grow and visit the temple. So what initially happened was they, they decided that they were going to move the prayer hall up into the void space, which is above us, where we're going to go in a second and then create the dining experience here. Because we were, even though everything was on one floor, we were still a little bit tight for space. Congregation was very small in those days, but they had the vision that in 5, 10, 15 years time, congregation is only going to grow. And if we don't use this time to accommodate that now, then we may lose, lose this opportunity. So all the elders got together, decided to redevelop the business, uh, the building, building, sorry, and they initiated the work to have a suspended floor raised where the prayer hall was going to get moved upstairs. So it was out of sight, out of mind, and then this was going to become the, the two communal kitchens. Actually, people are stopping me the whole day what I'm filming, where they can find it. And I want to thank you for that because it means for me a lot because I'm working on my videos every single week. W woke up early and making something for you that you can enjoy during the lockdown, lockdown time. And I really hope that you enjoy my video.